Hello again, my name is Marty Braden and I want to welcome you to my channel. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, I want to tell you that I'm not a polished speaker or performer or anything like that. In fact, I read more than I talk unscripted, but that doesn't mean that I'm not speaking from my heart. So that said, let me explain what my channel is about. This is just one video of a series of videos I'm doing as I review my book that I just recently published called An Atheist Delusion. It's my response to a book titled The God Delusion, where I give my perspective as Latter-day Saint on the God Delusion book written by Richard Dawkins, who, as you know, is a world-renowned evolutionary biologist and an acknowledged atheist. So, the particular video you are watching is part 63 in my series of videos. Part 62 was about the religious concept of deification and how the gospel of Jesus Christ helps us to attain godliness and thus become like our Heavenly Father. So, let's go pick it up from right where I left off last time, right here. Having a true knowledge of what God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ's true natures are and coming to an understanding of why we each need to develop a personal relationship with them is incredibly important. And that's because Christ's atonement is the one and only way in which we, as Heavenly Father's children, can return to Him, receive eternal life with Him, and live in His presence forever. Each of us can gain this knowledge, this important knowledge of the mysteries of godliness for ourselves individually by simply exercising our faith in Jesus Christ, which offers us His grace and enabling power to come to know Him. It should also be noted that like Richard Dawkins mentioned in The God Delusion, I too want to give my perspective on the so-called problem of an infinite past, or it's called infinite regression which she says is the issue or question that all Christians who are believers in God must answer, including Latter-day Saints. Anyone who believes that God has existed forever and that he created the universe ex nihilo, out of nothing, must confront the difficulties this question of the infinite past and regression of God's existence poses to them. An important or unsophisticated approach to infinities makes the idea of a God who exists forever seems illogical. Critics are often quick to see their own stance on such things as reasonable while believing that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the Christian's view on this question are simply incoherent. So, taking Mr. Beckwith's perspective of the nature of God in one hand, over here, and my Latter-day Saint perspective in the other hand, it's very clear <laughs> how very different our perspectives are. Because there are these differing perspectives, you are left to choose which perspective makes more sense to you and which perspective you want to believe in or like many have done before you, there's a third choice where you can choose to believe as Richard Dawkins does, which is to believe that God does not exist. The differences in doctrine comes down to what each believer believes the Bible is saying. On the one hand, the Christians believe only their interpretation of the Bible is the Word of God and correct and therefore is inerrant. On the other hand, the Latter-day Saints not only believe the Bible is the Word of God, we believe our standard works are also the Word of God. In addition to believing these books of Scripture, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, the Pearl of Great Price, and the Holy Bible, that they're the Word of God, we also believe the continuing revelation received and taught by the living prophets, seers, and revelators living amongst us today. They too, their words are the Word of God, which broadens and deepens our spiritual knowledge base even further. All these sources of Scripture provide an opportunity to increase our understanding of God's true nature, which is required, like it says in John 17, 3, if we are to enjoy eternal life. Because there are so many men and women who have conflicting interpretations of what the Holy Bible says and means, as I just explained, a multiplicity of religions have emerged, each of them having differing interpretations and understandings of the nature of God. Today's religious fervor, born out of these conflicting beliefs, is due to... Um, to what I have called the spirit of prophecy. It is quite similar to the religious fervor the prophet Joseph Smith experienced back in his day in 1820. Except today, there are literally 46,000 different churches and denominations to choose from. Joseph only had to worry about 200 or so. Because of this, I certainly understand why someone like Richard Dawkins feels the kind of disdain he has for religion itself, and in particular towards Christians and their so-called inerrant Bible. Here's what it says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, 
even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in you all. There should be only one true church, yet there are at least ten main groups of all believing different doctrines uh, formed from the Bible. Here are the seven main groups being followed today and their numbers. That's oh, pretty amazing. Catholicism is 1.2 billion. Protestantism is 600 to 800 million. Eastern Orthodoxy is 225 to 300 million. Oriental Orthodoxy is 86 million. And Anglicanism, that's a hard word for me to say, Anglicanism is 85 million. Restor Restorationism, non Trinitarianism is 41 million. And the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints is approximately 17 million. That's a whole lot of praying folks, don't you think? All our worldwide groups that claim their faith is the true and only true gospel, just as Richard has mentioned and criticized in the God Delusion book. As I just mentioned, there are at least 200 denominations in the United States alone and a staggering 46,000 globally, each individual church having broken off from their tree of origin with many church leaders choosing not to affiliate their church with any larger governing body or ecclesiastical polity that would require them to comply with only that body's prescribed doctrine and structure, though most of them have a few core common beliefs. That's true. Now, this reminds me of what I've been seeing of late. I, I'm sorry I don't have the exact names, but there's a Methodist uh, organization or denomination that is splitting, a major group that joined them years ago and now they're splitting apart again here in 2023 because there are some different doctrines being accepted within the church by the leadership. And this other group says, uh-uh-uh, the Bible doesn't say that, so they're pulling apart. And that's happened time and time and time again over hundreds, even thousands of years. It's really sad. One church, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. That's something we have to decide on if that's true or not. Even these smaller break-off church, churches claim their doctrine is the one true doctrine. And their church teachings are the one true gospel of Jesus Christ that they teach. Many of their leaders continue to criticize many of their contemporary Christian churches as being false, having stepped away from the Bible's truth like I just talked about. After considering all the religions of the world, and in particular what the views of Christendom and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints say regarding the true nature of God, which we went through that exercise, and what godliness is or means, you, like everyone else before you, if you haven't already done so, are left to decide which about all the religions that I have mentioned, or as Joseph Smith said, which out of all the churches is the one and only true church on the earth today. Of course, this is a question that is only asked by those who have a desire to know for themselves which of all the churches in the world is the one and true living church. There are many who um, ask themselves, do I even want to know for myself? I don't care. I don't want to know. Well, I would ask you, why not? Why don't you want to know? You and only you can do the thought work of deciding for yourself whether or not you want to choose to believe my perspective of God and His nature or some other perspective of Him. You must choose and then follow those doctrines that ring true in your heart and mind. I certainly grant you that privilege of worshiping according to the dictates of your own conscience and allow you the privilege of worshiping how, where, or what you may want to choose to worship or choose not to worship at all. My Latter-day Saint perspective tells me that it is by revelations that God gives uh, to his prophets that th uh, through the instrumentality of his spirit of the Holy Ghost through his prophets that anyone comes to the knowledge of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. This restored gospel was received and taught to the young teen, the prophet boy Joseph Smith Jr. in his 15th year, just before he saw that vision of the Father and the Son. By Jesus himself, he teaches it. The Savior himself appeared and began to teach the restored gospel. And later, his prophets, passed many, many centuries ago, came as resurrected being and appeared to Joseph. And then to Joseph and Oliver, restoring keys of the priesthood, restoring new knowledge, restoring the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. Fantastical story, I know. It's incredible. 
If I haven't received the Holy Ghost Spirit in it, I wouldn't have believed it either. Joseph's message rang true in my heart as I studied it. I felt a burning in my bosom, even that Spirit of Heaven pressing on my heart as I read and continued to read the Book of Mormon day to day. I just felt the need to put forth the effort so that I could find out for myself if it was true or not. I learned about Joseph's first vision and how he was then tutored and prepared to translate the Book of Mormon and how he became an instrument in God's hand in restoring the pure gospel of Jesus Christ in its fullness one more time before his second coming, including receiving all of the laws and ordinances that are a part of his gospel plan, each contributing to the plan of salvation and that of exaltation of man. Knowing what I know now, I pray for those of you who are searching for the answer to the same question that I had and that Joseph Smith had. Which of all the churches has the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ and God? What's the true nature of God? As well as the answers to all the rest of the big questions. Did I live before? I'm going to live after I die. Is that the end? Do I become a dirt pile? All those big questions. I encourage you to read the Book of Mormon in its entirety and then pray about it. Just as Moroni invites everyone to read it and then ask God in sincerity with real intent if it's true. Because if you do, it will add a plethora of new reference links to your circular stand upon which you can rest your table of belief confidently and firmly and fixed. I have faith in God. I truly do. And I trust that he will answer anyone's pleadings and prayers to know which of all the churches on this planet teaches his pure gospel. I know that if you will but seek after him with real intent, exercising faith in Jesus Christ by showing him you are willing to humble yourself and put your trust in him by standing on his promises. I promise you, he will answer your prayers, for his promises are promises of certainty. In other words, I'm asking you to take a leap of faith and take God at his word. But I said the four steps to come to know God exist and then to have an answer about the which of all the churches is to learn what it is. First of all, learn that gospel. Number two, pray for the love of God to burn in your heart, that feeling of heaven pressing upon your heart. Pray for that. Then go put it into action. Be kind to others. Uh, act as he which says, if you do are hearers only, you're not going to know. He says, be you doers of the word. He said, if you live the doctrine, you'll know whether I'm speaking of myself, I'm just, you know, um, blowing in the wind, or if it truly is the word of God, is to do it. Live the commandments. Pray daily. Exercise faith by being kind and to do service to another. And then that last one, is to then offer up your gift of repentance, is to give up your, your sins to, to Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the atoning one. He took upon him your sins, but we've got to repent. So those are the four steps that you, in that process, you're going to come to know. And you say, well, how? that's all is acting as though I know God exists. I understand that. But that's the first step is to, like it says, to in the doing, the Spirit comes. In the do, acting, the Spirit comes. In the exercising faith, the Spirit comes. Faith is the, the, the great objective power of all things. We, everything that we do is a result of faith. Getting up in the morning is a result of faith. Uh, kneeling on our knees is an act of faith and courage because men, in particular, are proud. Oh, I don't want to talk to God. I don't even believe in God. I'm a man. I know more than anybody else. And I, but to actually have an intelligent, a strong-willed, a successful man humble himself and to act as though he's a child submitting to a heavenly father, that is a tough thing. And I understand, especially if you love the pleasures of the world. It's very easy to love the God of pleasure because Satan will give us all that we ask and do all the things that we just feed ourselves and to satisfy our, our passions and that without any restriction, that's easy for a man to do. But it's very tough to say, no, i got to stop. I've got to see if there truly is a God. And so I would say to all of those of you who want to know, is God live? And is the, does he have a, a church and kingdom on this earth that's true? And are these uh, Latter-day Saints, the Church of Jesus Christ, the Latter-day Saints, true? Are they, could they possibly be telling the true story? Are their truth claims that true? Really? It's spectacular. It's almost unbelievable. 
all the things that they say with angels and resurrected beings and God the Father and the Son separate, distinct, appearing to a boy. All of that is fantastical. It's just crazy unless you find out that it's just taught in the Bible. It's taught and the Holy Ghost will tell you. He's the testator. He will answer those questions. So set it aside for a moment. Step into the bubble a little bit and pray about it. Read the Book of Mormon. Read a chapter. And as we go through this rest of these chapters in the uh, my book, An Atheist uh, Delusion, you will see bit by bit, principle by principle, every reference leg uh, of evidence will push your belief cursor closer and closer and closer to the God exists. He's real. He is our Heavenly Father. We are His literal spirit children. He built this earth. He created it for us that we could progress to become like Him, to become um, higher and higher in our character, to be achieve and attain unto godliness, becoming like our Heavenly Father. It's not going to all be whipped through here in this earth life of 80 to 100 years. No way. There's an eternity. But this is where we learn and take on the learning and that godliness and that character of Christ that will allow us to live in his presence. So I just I just hope that you'll stay with me. You'll listen to other videos that I've done and to the ones I'm still going to do. We're going to get through this book. And by the time we're done, oh my goodness, you're going to have so much, so much of reference legs that is so wide holding the table of your belief that, bam, you're going to know God does live. And I so testify of that in the name of my Savior and your Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thoughts, questions, write them down. Look forward to it. Until then, I wish you continued success. Goodbye.